On a donc l'export manager et le maître distillateur de 2000 canonnés qui viennent nous présenter la première distillerie israélienne. Je vous demande de les accueillir chaleureusement, s'il vous plaît. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone will understand us because we usually don't understand ourselves. And I want to first uh, introduce uh, Gal, which is the founder and, and the owner, and uh, Tomer, the chef distiller. Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, we have a French name now. So we are from Tel Aviv. Uh, I guess if anyone been to Tel Aviv, yeah. So come afterwards to our uh, stand. I'll give you some some screen lotion next time you come to to Israel. So uh, we're from Tel Aviv. Our um, distillery. He's located just five minutes walk from the beach. So I guess then everyone is here, all the rest of the crew is down at the beach. And let's speak a little bit about how we started the whole thing. So of course, you see uh, Tomer, which is, yeah, it's you. Uh, Tomer, uh, the distiller is gonna speak about himself a little bit. He doesn't like to speak about himself. And Gal, which is the owner, and Dr. Jim Swan, that was with us when we started. He was our consultant and actually the first master distiller. Uh, you probably know him uh, from other distilleries, but he was actually uh, the best in distilling and aging whiskey in warm climates, like, like in Israel, like in Tel Aviv. Uh, I think his famous work was uh, Kavalan. So Taipei and Tel Aviv, hot and humid. I think we are a bit closer to the beach, but uh, or our beach are ni is nicer. But the, in climate control, if you talk about, not the control, if you talk about climate and aging whiskey in hot climate, it's almost the same method. So, I think it's your turn now. It's about establishing and everything. So the crazy idea of making whiskey in Israel is started uh, in 2012. Uh, we thought about the idea. People, uh, people uh, said uh, we are very crazy, but uh, we still did it. First distillation was in 2015, uh, which means that we have whiskey right now. In uh, 2017, uh, we released the first Israeli whiskey. You know the calculation, which means that in the mid-time, we did a little experiment and we could have uh, had whiskey in 2017. Uh, first export, thank you, Tal, was 2018. And uh, the triple cask, young single man, 2019, you should know it. And the uh, whiskey will be here uh, very soon. We have for the show very nice whiskey that you will taste. But in the beginning of 2020, you will have whiskey from Israel uh, in France. So. so, just a quick uh, technical things. We are doing mostly unpitted barley. Okay, just twice a year we are doing we are uh, mashing pitted barley. Uh, the pitted barley is from Czech Republic. And uh, the unpitted barley, the usual, the co our common barley is from Mantons in England. Uh, we have one ton batches, and we uh, do 10 batches a week, okay? For stainless steel, uh, first distillation is in 9,000 liters wash steel, and second distillation is in uh, really nice steel that made for us uh, in Karl in Germany. It's a 3,500 liter steel. And uh, maturation, so we have about, it's, it's no more than it, it's about uh, 1,500 casks in house, in our warehouse that located near the distillery, just in the distillery. We will talk about this later. Uh, we are filling now about 800 casks a year, but not, of, not all of our uh, Spirit goes to whiskey because we, dis we make also gin and herbal liquor. And we also have the new make, you can taste it in our stand. Okay. Our core range of casks is based mainly on ex-bourbon. Okay, about 70% of our casks are ex-bourbon. Beside the ex-bourbon we have mostly STR red wine casks and virgin oak and Israeli red wine casks. Uh, other casks that we have, 
from the, the series that will be in our portfolio is x Isla and the uh, sherry casks. The sherry is very interesting. You can taste it in our stand. We don't have time today. Others, other experimental casks, we have a lot of types. Uh, the most interesting is the pomegranate cask. We, use, we have some big uh, winery in Israel that produce pomegranate wine. We use their casks. It's very Israeli. It's very, uh, very common to us, very special to us. No one uses this guys, this kind of cask. Okay. So, uh, as we said, we are located in Tel Aviv, um, which is a Mediterranean city, not far from the beach, just between Tel Aviv and Jaffa. And you have to understand, Tel Aviv is a hundred years old. Jaffa is four thousand years old, and one of the oldest cities. And Tel Aviv, the name in Hebrew, Tel is ruins, Aviv is spring. So everything is, is old and new. And I think that this is our distillery. We are doing a uh, very uh, traditional way of uh, distilling, of single malt uh, making, but with all kinds of crazy casks and crazy ideas, which you are going to taste here and in our stand if you uh, will come. But um, I just looked at my phone earlier, and it's uh, 29 degrees right now in Tel Aviv, and this is autumn. <laughs> so... Uh, it's never-ending summer. We are just so enjoying the, the, the little bit of rain here because we have, I guess, around six weeks of winter. Um, so 300 days of sunshine, temperatures between 16. It can go down to 10 degrees, something like that, in the, in the winter. But the winter is drier, and the summers are very hot and very humid. So just think about aging a cask, that if it's so humid, the alcohol evaporates and the water stays in. So actually the ABV goes down. And it, in the winter, it's dry, so water goes out, so the ABV actually goes up. So it depends when you take it out of the cask, sometimes it's stronger. Where you can put it in a cask, and after one year, it's going to be stronger by alcohol. So it's different. And of course, the humidity, we talked about it, 50, it's in the uh, winter, and can go up to 90% humidity. It's like walking in, in a soup or something like that. It's very hard. So we are a very small country from side to side, from the northern part to the lowest, uh, um, let's say, the southern point. It's 430, 450 kilometers, total of uh, 20,000 square kilometers. And I think the top, uh, the highest mountain is just above uh, 2,000 meters, and the lowest place on Earth, the lowest place in the world, is minus 428 meters below sea level, which is the Dead Sea. So, of course, we have five climate zones in this very small country. So, of course, Upper Galilee with the mountains and the snow in the, in the winter, and Jerusalem mountains, Mediterranean. This is just five minutes walk from the, from the distillery here. The desert very dry, very hot, and the Dead Sea, which is kind of a very weird place. It's very low, it's very hot, can go up to 50, 55 uh, degrees, but it's not a part of the desert belt in the world. So it's not, it was not supposed to be a desert, but because it's so low, Tel Aviv is zero, Jerusalem is plus 700, and then half an hour later, minus 428 meters. So it's not supposed to be a desert, but because the clouds when they get there, they have no more rain, so it became a desert. And the sea is so salty because of the ground around it and because of the sun. So aging casks there is crazy. Very small area with all kinds of ways to, uh, to mature the, the casks. It's a really... It's working? No? Yeah. It's really good playground uh, for blenders, for uh, whiskey distillers, because you have so many different climates to, to, that the whiskey develops really, really different in each one of them. It's very nice. We will see one. Okay. We'll move to a movie. I'll show you a little clip. It doesn't have sound, so I will explain or tell. Dead? No, this is not the no. Dead Sea. This is, we talked about the, the wonders of the world, so we have one of them with uh, the lowest place on Earth. You're going to see it in a second. And this is our wonder. <laughs> so we start our journey from the Med Sea, Mediterranean Sea. We call this tasting, which you're going to go through, Med against Dead. 
So it's Med Sea, Mediterranean Sea, against the Dead Sea. So we load the casks there next to the beach in Jaffa. So this is old Jaffa, and then you can see Tel Aviv now. This is me. Yeah, still you. Minus 400 meters, you can see it. Israel's greatest wonder. And now we are aging the cask on the top of a, of a hotel roof. You will see it. So because it's in a roof, on a roof, it's minus 300 and something, not minus 400. And here, Tomer tried to kill himself because tried to smell a cask at uh, 50 uh, degrees. When you take out the sample, it's warm. It's almost like tea. We, okay, guess, we guess it's around, in Tel Aviv, we have a kind of something like between 9 and 11% angel share. At the Dead Sea, can go up to 25. So we cannot do a full maturation there. We have to do like a one year and then bring the casks over to the distillery, put it aside, but uh, you're going to see it in a second. Uh, okay, so we, you have an idea how, it's, how it is at the Dead Sea. Uh, now we'll go to testing med versus dead, okay? Mediterranean Sea against the Dead Sea. So in, the, in your first glass, you have rye cask, small rye cask, 113 liters. Uh, aged at the distillery for only 10 months. Okay, we talked about Israel is very hot and humid, so we have kind of quick maturation. Okay, anyway, we will not call anything lower than three years whiskey. Okay, so relax. And this is in Tel Aviv. The Mediterranean Sea is just nearby the distillery. You can taste it. Number one and two is cask samples, so 55% alcohol. First one, Tel Aviv, second one, Dead Sea. So you can taste and do a comparative tasting, but same cask, same feeling, same dates, exactly. Actually, the Dead Sea is two days younger, <laughs> I think so, but you can actually taste in 10 months uh, the whole difference here. 10 months, it's a little bit spicy. That's mainly from the rye cask. But it is very smooth, very sweet, and nice. Now you can move to the second glass, which is the same twin cask aged at the Dead Sea. Same cask filled in two days difference. You can see... Look at the colors. The differences in the color. Distillery, Dead Sea. It's 55%. It's 55%, sorry. <laughs> so, you see the differences? It can be good, it can be very bad for maturation. Okay, we have to learn how to work with it, but it gives us more opportunities and more different things to work with. I think one of the most, uh, you know, extreme uh, things we have to learn when maturing whiskey, even in Tel Aviv, not, not only in the Dead Sea, because the fast maturation, you have to monitor every cask almost once a week or something like that. You cannot, you know, just uh, forget a cask for, for, I don't know, one year, taste it from time to time, every week, every two weeks. If the Scotch say, you, you feel on your cask and your whiskey is going to sleep, our casks are working. <laughs> They're working hard. Okay. At the beginning, we wanted to do another comparison between two SDR casks, but uh, they told us that it's too much to pour at the master cask. So you are really welcome to our stand. We have these two pouring of SDR at the Dead Sea and SDR cask at the distillery. Very different comparison, but very interesting. Uh, we'll move on. Tal, do you want to talk about the yeah. young single malt? So, um Glass number three, drum number three, is a, a young single malt. Okay, again, we don't have regulations in Israel. We could have called it whiskey since day one, but we are following the Scottish regulations, so we don't call it whiskey. It's a young single malt, and I think uh, in France it's even young spirit age single malt or something like that. And it's a triple cask. 
It's a uh, it's blend of uh, three casks, ex-bourbon, ex-red wine cask, STR, and uh, ex-Isla. I think this one was a Lafroy cask. So a little bit of ex-Isla, you get a, a bit of uh, smokiness, a bit of pitiness, and of course the roundness. But bear in mind, it's a young, young product, but you don't feel it's that young because of our climate. I think we were in London together giving a tasting uh, like that, and people really didn't understand how it tastes like that in a in few months or, or a few years. So we said, you know, just think, I told him, you know, I'm 13 years old, look at me. You age much faster in the Middle East. And uh, I think that um, someone asked us about if we're going to keep the cask for 12 years, 15 years. Of course, you know, uh, professionally, it's going to be probably overmatured, and you lose a lot uh, for the angels. But we said, you know, we laughed and we said, we, you don't plan that far away at the Middle East, you know. <laughs> you have to think about that tomorrow. So this one is a triple cask, a very young one, 46 ABV because it's non-chill filter. And I hope you like it. It's always, almost 10 months? Yeah, 10 months it's old. It's about 10 months old. It gives you the idea what we can do in such a short time or the idea of how Horowski will be in three years' time or more. And I think this is amazing for the age. Uh, speaking about myself. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is also available here in, the, in France uh, through La Maison du Whisky. But it's going to disappear because we are just about to launch our whisky. I think the first shipment of classic whisky from us is going to be in this November, so it's probably going to reach... Uh, France in the end of uh, December, the beginning of next year. So those bottles from now on, I think they're going to be something like a collector's item, but it's, uh, it's a young single mode, it's not a whiskey yet. Uh, we just, these are the last bottles I think we have. But the most interesting bottle for today is a special release of whiskey. This is whiskey. You see the bottle, this is our new shape of bottle. Uh, this is only 100 bottles of ex-bourbon casks finished in Isla casks. 55% alcohol, okay? And this is a special release for La Maison de Whiskey. So this is about four years old. It's technically three years old because you must call it the youngest cask, but it's more close to four years old. 55%, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, you, see, you can see the little, on the bottle, there's a La Maison de Whiskey exclusive and a little Eiffel Tower there. <laughs> so this is actually how our uh, very next near future is going to look like. So this is the first, the classic, which is, um, you can see a little bit of Tel Aviv here. And uh, the classic is mostly bourbon cask with a little bit of uh, STR red wine. If you don't, STR, it's shaved, toasted, and recharred. So it's a red wine cask, which uh, was developed originally for Kavalan, and now uh, lots of distilleries are, are using it. It's, it's great in warm climates, gives you lots of character and taste in the first year, and then it balances and, you know, aging like any other cask. So it gives us a little bit of uh, spiciness and fruitiness uh, to the blend. Uh, just think about when it's hot, everything spreads. So it's like a little crocodile skin inside. And then when it spreads, the liquid goes in and extracts most of the tannins and some of the woodiness and, of course, the taste of the wines. So this is mostly bourbon cast, a little bit of STR. This is going to be available from uh, this year, from the end of this year. And this series will be called The Elements, X sherry cask. It's a very interesting project. We had to send a rabbi from Barcelona to Jerez to make a kosher sherry wine. Cause, so we made the wine kosher, and then we seasoned the cask with uh, Pedro Jimenez and with the Oloroso sherry, and we got the cask. I don't, we, we don't know what they did with the wines, because, because we don't care, but we just needed the wine for the casks. Um, we are from Tel Aviv, so us and kosher is not something that goes together. We're not from Jerusalem. But... Um, you know, they say the, the best thing about Jerusalem is the way to Tel Aviv. But again, if we're talking about an added value for us, it's easy for us to make a kosher product, so why not? This one is a pitted cask, so it's the same. Three of them, sherry casks, pitted casks, and 
This one is going to be with Israeli wine casks, ex-Israeli wine cask, which, of course, if you take a Cabernet Sauvignon from here and from Israel, it's going to be totally different. And the last one is going to be all kinds of special editions. You saw the range of the crazy cask we have from ex-pomegranate cask, um, IPA or whatever, or Dead Sea. So it's going to be small batches, uh, single casks, and all kinds of stuff like that. And I think we really wait for this one. Any questions? Where, where does the name Beef and Honey? Why, why is the brand is named? I think you are so uh, the, the Milk and Honey is uh, from the Bible. It's uh, the land of the Milk and Honey. This is how the land of Israel is talked about uh, in the Bible. Uh, but still, we are not a uh, very religion uh, in our company. So I guess for most of the world, we will call them m and uh, Distillery. Uh, for the really the people that really care about where it's from, it will be the uh, land of the milk and honey. Yeah, there's no milk and no honey inside. Okay, uh, in the end of the whiskey show, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, on the, it's because of the bourbon cask. No, no, no. In, in the end of whiskey shows, when people know that drink a little bit more, so uh, they usually come and they usually come and look for something sweet. They say, ah, you're the guys with the milk and the honey. So no, it's and only whiskey. Another thing, it's a bull, so don't try to take the milk from the bull. Uh -huh. Another question, somebody? So uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome to come to our stand and see more uh, from the uh, uh, Dead Sea uh, cask and uh, to see more things. Uh, and, and another special whiskey we made a few years ago. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>